Okay, if we could have your attention, please. We are now joined by our second place finisher, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., driver of the number 17 Fastenal Ford for Roush Fenway Racing. Tonight's race, he tied a career best finish um, set at Bristol in March 2014, and this is the highest finish for Roush Fenway Racing this season. So, Ricky, congratulations on a great race. Just talk about it out there. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough. Um, you know, we didn't have the car exactly where we needed to be uh, to start the race. Went two laps down. Uh, wasn't real sure we were going to be able to to get back on the lead lap. We had some some really good timely cautions. Um, Nick made a lot of great changes to get our car better, and uh, that was the really uh, you know the the thing that turned us around was was the good adjustments on pit road, <clears throat> and um, we made a lot of them. So. Uh, really good team effort. Um, you know, I really wanted to to park it in victory lane for Brian and uh, and his family, but you know, we just came up one spot short. I thought uh, I thought we were matching the four car lap for lap there at the end. I just um, you know starting sixth. I, I, he he kind of stretched it out on me, and I wasn't able to um, to really make a run at it. So um, you know, uh, really happy with how we how we ended the day. It was a tough weekend. We'll open up for questions for Ricky. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll start with Matt and then come up to Tucker. Matt Weaver, uh, Racer.com, Auto Week Magazine. Um, how involved has Chris and Bob been as far as team meetings and, and things of that nature? And how welcoming have the primary guys at Roush Fenway Racing been uh, to y'all's collaboration? Oh, they're in every single meeting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we share a lot of information. It's um, it's awesome to start seeing it paying off. I know they were struggling at the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, Chris is a great race car driver. Uh, he showed that in the Xfinity Series. And, um, you know, I think uh, the the time in, in the car every week, um, you know, and, and getting better with working with Bob, you know, his first year working with him as a crew chief. And, um, you know, they're very, very in, integrated in, into our processes. And, um, you know, it starts at the top. Everybody at Roush Fenway has been working hard to, to improve what we're uh, coming to the track with. Uh, and, you know, that goes down to the, to the uh, 34 team as well. Okay, we'll take our next question from Tucker and then over to Bob. Uh, Tucker White, SpeedwayMedia.com. Now, Ricky, now granted your runner-up finish was pro did have a lot of help from a good chunk of attrition, but what does a runner-up finish like this say about the uh, continuing efforts to bring Roush Fenway Racing back to the to the top of the uh, the series. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, I, I, I know, you know, f for me um, that, uh, you know, we didn't pass all the cars out there. We didn't, um, you, you know, we didn't pass the best of the best cars out there, but um, we passed some cars that were running uh, and leading laps uh, throughout the whole race, the 19 led a lot of laps or led some laps, ran up front, um, you know, the fastest car here in qualifying there. Um, so we passed some good cars. I mean, we got to look at it as, um, you know, what we were able to accomplish coming from two laps down and making our car better. Um, you know, I do think that some of those cars in the wreck we could have got by uh, after making our car better. But, um, you know, we, we know we still got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, but this is uh, just builds confidence that, um, you know, we we're able to, to get our car better throughout the race. Okay, next question from Bob and then Kenny, and then we'll go over to Pete and Rick. Bob Parker, CSPN. Uh, if there was a late caution, would you have had something for Harvick, or did he have the best car at the end? You know, I, I don't really know. I mean, he had a lead big enough that, um, you know, he may not have been pressing the, pressing the issue as much. Um, you know, I thought we were lapping him at lap time, you know, lap for lap. So, um, you know, I'd definitely give it all I got if we had had a restart there. Um, you know, like I said last time in here, uh, you know, a restart, uh, you know, on the front row here at Bristol, um, if you don't give it all you got and, and, and move them out of the way or, um, you know, whatever you need to do, you don't really want it bad enough. So, um, you know, we would have, we would have given it all we got. And I thought we had a car that, uh, was capable of doing that the run before uh, or before we put tires on uh, when him and the 22 were battling I thought we were faster than they were um, you know lap for lap so um, I definitely think we would have had a shot at it okay next question from Kenny Kenny Bruce from NASCAR.com Ricky Bristol's typically been a pretty good track for you given your season this year did you feel like you had a good had a shot at a top 10 top five finish here this weekend and also did the did the way they the changes to the track did that 
impact the way you raced here at all? Um, you know, I always feel confident coming to Bristol, for sure. Um, you know, at the start of the weekend, uh, definitely wouldn't have thought we would have had a top 10 car. Um, you know, qualifying wasn't real good for us. Um, but we didn't really get to practice on the top because of what they did to the racetrack on the bottom. Everybody uh, kind of ran down there. And, you know, we ran some laps up top in practice, but, you know, it was it was not rubbered up and, and ran in enough to, to really say, hey, this is going to work up here. We thought it was going to work, and, you know, Larson and I talked about it a lot over the weekend, and um, we were – we, we thought we could get it rolling and, and it'd be the best. And he showed in the Xfinity race that, uh, that it was going to be good. So, um, you know, I wish, you know, going back to practice, we probably uh, needed to run up there a little bit more to, to start closer uh, in the race. We, we weren't very good to start the race. So um, that being said, I thought we practiced a little different than normal uh, with, with what they did to the racetrack. But, um, you know, for me, I was glad that the race wasn't won on the bottom. I think this race is way better won on the top. Um, you know, I thought what they did to the racetrack definitely uh, opened up the bottom for options. Uh, the 11, I mean, I, I passed quite a few cars down there. Um, I thought the 11, the 19, some of those really fast cars that got their car working could pass some good cars down there. So um, I thought it made it a two-groove racetrack for sure and, and definitely more interesting. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it was a bad option. Okay, we'll go next to Pete and then Rick. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Ricky, uh, how difficult is it because of the weather to keep your poise and your patience, no, not really knowing what was going to happen? That must be a frustrating thing at times. Well, yeah, we've uh, unfortunately, you know, become accustomed to it lately. Uh, last couple of years, it seems like. Um, you know, what, what I was really bummed about is I thought we had a really good crowd last night. Um, you know, it seemed like a lot of fans were here and uh, excited for the race. And, uh, you know, I was, I was bummed that we just didn't get it in. Um, you know, I, it was nice to see the fans that were able to stay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of fans that uh, couldn't didn't get to see a, a great race, whether they were driving home and had to listen to it. Good job, too. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, going in and out uh, of, of getting ready, not getting ready, and, um, you know, we were getting close to 1 o'clock or, or 1230 there, and uh, I was still in some workout clothes laying around in the bus thinking it was going to rain, <laughs> uh, and it did. So, um, you know, I got to wait around a little longer. But, um, you know, you definitely get cooped up in the, uh, in the bus and, and want to get going. Hey, Ricky, Rick, Rick Manel, the Charlotte Observer, and it's interesting that Chris is sitting next to you because the other day a couple of us were asking Joey, about Chris winning the other the other weekend, and Joey said, "I don't think average fans really appreciate how hard it is, no matter how you do it, to win one of these races." He said, "The level of competition at the very top is just so profound." I'm just curious, as, as, you know, you where you got today, where you put yourself into a position to get a second place win. Can you talk a little about the the nuances you're picking up and how that might change the decision making? you make over the course of a race and you know do you in other words if you get into that spot how do you feel you'd be ready to handle it when when that time comes yeah i mean um you know what chris and, and bob was able to do as a team is uh you know that's what this sport's about it's all about making the right decisions and the right calls and um you know and they nailed it at pocono um you know there's a lot of people that uh you know get wins on uh you know fuel mileage or uh you know uh, rain or rain shortened races and um, you know that uh, I would take a win that way um, you know but I think we as a team um, you know got to run a little bit better before we um, you know make decisions like that to, to, to really pull off a win um, you know I think Chris will tell you they had some you know really fortunate circumstances that gave them the opportunity to, to make that decision and stay out. Um, you know, it's just the way these races work out. But even if you have the fastest car, you're not always going to win. you got to make sure that you do everything that you can do. Uh, make the right pit calls, pit, don't speed, you know, uh, you know, make good moves on the racetrack and, and not tear up your car. So, uh, man, there's just it's just so hard to win these races. And, um, you know, if we keep putting ourselves, uh, you know, in the top five and in the top ten, uh, you can make different calls as, you know, my crew chief taking two tires or, um, you know, things like that to, to leapfrog some people and, and get that track position, you know, maybe start 
you know, in the lead, and then maybe I could have held the four off, you know. So, um, you know, it's just uh, it's just a product of learning. I don't know. Um, you know, we as drivers, we put it all out there and uh, run every lap like we're qualifying to, uh, to to be the best in this series. You can't take a lap off. Um, you know, here at Bristol, you got to put it up next to the wall and, and you got to gas it up. And um, you know, I mean, my right arm was almost going numb. I was, you know, so tensed up, making sure I, I hit my marks every single lap there at the end. So, um, I mean, we we run as hard as we can to win. And um, I'm just saying that. If if you're running better, then then you have more options as a as a team to to make better calls and, and make you know I guess more daring calls I guess and, and win some races. Okay, we'll finish up questions for Ricky with Mike and then Dustin. Mike Embry, USA Today. The service for Brian uh, a Wednesday. Are you going to play a role in that? Do, do you know yet? Uh, I mean, I mean it's been so all over all over the place with. Um, you know, getting everything organized, but um, you know, I, I'm sure I will. Um, you know, we're going to get there. I think uh, it, it's going to be cool. Uh, starting around one o'clock, um, just going to have friends and family tell stories and you know, good stories that, that we had with Brian throughout the years, and um, that'll start at one o'clock. And then um, they're actually going to have a race at Kokomo, uh, so hot laps will start at six thirty. And then uh, a friend of um, you know, ours that was going to play Brian and Lauren's wedding is actually going to play after the race um, for all the fans and, and friends that, that are going to be out there. So Kokomo was uh, Brian's favorite place to race every Sunday night. So it'll be uh, it'll be special. Okay, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. You've gone through so much the last week and a half, couple of weeks, and and on the track, off the track. What's this the roller coaster been like? And even have a day like today where. You come close to, to getting your first win with everything that you had pulling in, having Brian's name. I mean, how have you gotten through this period? And I'm guessing you're just emotionally exhausted at this point. Yeah, this. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the Saturday night watching the race um, from Belleville. Um, as soon as it happened, I texted our agent and uh, told him that he needed to to figure some things out before anything was announced. I, I watched it. The ambulances hadn't even got there, and uh, and I went ahead and told him that. Uh, he needed to figure out a way to get to, to Kansas because I, I just had a feeling that, you know, that it wasn't good. So it started Saturday night um, and, and, and went through, obviously, um, you know, a roller coaster that whole night. I was, I was getting updated um, throughout the night. I was up to about 2 o'clock, 2.30 that morning, um, you know, talking to him and, and trying to figure out what was going on. So, um it's definitely been been tough, but I think going to Knoxville and um, you know being with his family, being with his fiance, um, and, and being with friends that uh, that we all had a, a great time together, um, you know, talking about it, you know, talking through things and uh, talking about all the good things that Brian did and, and you know his organ donation really helped a lot of us uh, really uh, feel comforted uh, with with what uh, you know he was still doing. Uh, after the fact and um you know the the service thursday uh wednesday i mean thursday this past week was uh was one of the toughest days uh that that i think i had but um again just being there with and telling stories really uh really i think helped us all get through it uh, his fiance lauren has been uh been a rock getting everybody i mean she's supporting everybody even though you think it would be the other way around i mean she's She's really um, helped a lot of people. So uh, we're, we're really looking forward to getting there Wednesday. And, again, just being with uh, all the racing family that uh, we were able to, to always be around. And, um, you know, I know Brian was watching and, and wanting us to win tonight. Um, and we gave it all we had. Um, you know, it's, uh, he, he was trying to run 200 races. Somebody asked me, you know, how do you feel coming uh, to, to here and racing? And, um you know, talking with Tim, Brian's dad, he was like, man, I feel like Brian's probably mad at me right now because I'm not at home working on a midget to get it ready to go racing because um, Brian, all he wanted to do was race. And uh, that's what he was doing and, and leading one of the biggest races of the year. And uh, it was, um, if he had to choose a way to go out, I feel like that was the way he wanted. Lauren and, and, and her mom and dad were here. Uh, Tim did not come and, and Brian's family, but uh, they came and just hung out all day on on Saturday um, throughout the day around the motorhome and 
Um, you know, I was like, well, you know, rain delays are, are good for some things. We all got to hang out together and uh, spend some more time together. And uh, that, that definitely has been helping us uh, a lot the last couple weeks. Ricky, congratulations again. Thank, Thank you, you for your time tonight. Okay, we're also joined by our fifth place finisher, Chris Busher, driver of the number 34 Loves Travel Stops Ford for Front Row Motorsports. This is Chris's second top five finish of the season, and he is now 13 points ahead of 30th now in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. So, Chris, congratulations on a great run. Just talk about your race tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> glad, uh, glad we finally got it in. Um, yeah, it's a, a pretty awesome weekend for our Loves Fusion. You know, we, we started off... Uh, the weekend uh, on the right foot, uh, you know, we, we've had speed off the truck. Uh, we've been hanging in there. Our, our mock runs in, in qual or uh, late practice were not uh, not fun. <laughs> I felt like I was all over the place, and we got to qualifying, and we had really good speed. So uh, our best qualifying effort of the year, uh, you know, we started the race last night. Uh, you know, got shuffled back a little bit on the start. Uh, had some ideas that we were going to change when uh, we got to the competition caution, and uh, we got – I guess fortunately a lot of time to sit down in the trailer and talk with uh, Bob and um, and the whole team just about what we we're going to do when uh, that competition caution came out, uh, whatever happened ended up being today. But once we, we started adjusting on it, we definitely started heading in the right direction. Uh, our Ford was awesome on long runs. Uh, you know, it'd fire off uh, about two or three laps it would take to get rolling and, you know, it was tough for uh, for those couple and, and then we were able to, to move around. Uh, we were still able to, to go to the bottom and, and pass there later in runs, which I thought was really good. Uh, I felt good about our, our car. We came uh, really similar to where we left off the spring race at Bristol. Uh, we had a really good speed there that time, and uh, it carried over pretty well, even with uh, the changes on the track and uh, the, the VHT and rosin sprayed down. So uh, I was really happy with it. Uh, I think the, the track changes made for some, some great racing. Uh, I don't think it's uh, – a dominant bottom groove, but it, it gave us options and uh, gave us somewhere to go to pass lap cars. It, it gave us uh, a line to run for restarts. Uh, no longer were you doomed to uh, to be on the bottom uh, like we were last time here. Uh, top still rolled pretty good on that initial jam up, but uh, a different a different way uh, of restarts playing out for sure uh, than than the last time here. So that was. Um, that was fun. Uh, I, I told the guy that's that's the most fun I've had since Kentucky earlier this year. So I'm proud of the proud of the effort they put in. I know it's tough to to sit around here all day. Uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty awesome for the the tons of fans that that did stick around and hung out with us. Uh, I know that was pretty miserable just watching them sit up there in the in the rain last night. So uh, happy uh, a lot of them stuck out and uh, stuck around to to watch us put on a show. That was a, it was a blast. So glad we pulled it off. Now we're uh, looking at the next couple to go do more of the same thing. Okay, we'll start with Kenny and then go to Tucker and then over to Mike. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Chris, I think like five laps to go maybe, you're, you're battling right on Austin's bumper and they're telling you, hey, you, you're clear, go get him if you can. You know, if you want to try something, try it basically. At that point, knowing how important every point is, do you, do you kind of think, okay, if I do and I screw up, we could throw all of this away? Or do you think it's as important as it is, if I can get to him, I need to try to get by him? I uh, wasn't planning on messing up if I got next to him. So, uh, you know, it was uh, one of those things where, you know, we could catch him and then mess up a corner and get a little bit of gap. Um, and then we, we got back to him there. Uh, I don't – I think the 19 and someone else was behind us, and they were within a couple car lengths. So I didn't want to go to the bottom and give those two cars a chance to pass us and lose two points that easily. Um, so I wanted to make sure that, that we had more time. So uh, I was pretty focused ahead. I never looked in the mirror the last run and I was just uh, pretty much waiting on, on DK to, to tell me that we had a little bit of wiggle room that we could go out there and try something. And it didn't come until about five to go, like you said. And we got to his bumper and we could roll up to him in the center and we got off a little better. Um, but at that point in the run, the we are just a little bit too far on tires to be able to make the pass work on the bottom. Uh, I meant to go one lap earlier, and uh, and they said white flag it, and that happened to be the lap that I was planning on going to the bottom. So I, I missed it a little bit. My timing was a little off. Uh, if the start finish line would have been on the back stretch, we'd have been in good shape, but um, not the case. So it was it was fun though. Uh, it was a good race. I've raced with Austin a lot, uh, all the way back to Legends Car days and uh, some Arca stuff and plenty of Xfinity. So. 
we've always uh, been able to race each other clean. Uh, we never touched for those last uh, 20, 30 laps, however many it was, and, and it was fun to uh, to be right there with them, trying to get that, that one extra point. Go ahead, Tucker. Uh, Tucker White, SpeedwayMedia.com. Uh, Chris, a few weeks ago you accomplished the hardest part of getting into the chase with the win at Pocono, and with his fifth place finish. Uh, sorry. Uh, you got it. Well, this win with your finish here at Bristol, you you now sit 13 points ahead of David Reagan and 30th in points. Now, I know Bristol is pretty much its own unique animal and not really similar to any other track other than Dover, but what does a finish like this say about maybe your chances of possibly doing more than just making the chase and possibly going beyond the first round? Uh, it's, it was a pretty big day for us. Um, we've had really strong days at the track, and uh, we, we've had a lot of bad luck. Uh, obviously, at Pocono, we had some really good luck. Uh, it, it's been a roller coaster ride of a season, and, and because of that, um, we're having to talk about racing for that top 30th, uh, top 30 place in points. Um, and, and I know everybody can say the same thing. Everybody can pick out a handful of races and say if it weren't for those, they'd be in a, in a lot different situation. And um, I, I guess I'm focused on, on what ours were. Uh, but nonetheless, where we're at right now, uh, our last several months, we've been showing up with a lot of speed. Uh, we've had some races this year that we've been really good in, in you know, our, our, some of the, the racetracks that we're going to go to in the chase. Um, some of the mile-and-a-half stuff has been really good for us. The worn-out racetrack, uh, you know, the older asphalt, the Atlanta, Fontana. Uh, Darlington's my favorite track. It's not in the chase, so we'll, uh, we'll see what plays out there. But I think it'll be good to, to help get us in the chase uh, a little bit more comfortably. Uh, you know, for uh, from my standpoint, and uh, Front Row Motorsports has been working extremely hard, and you know we've been uh, been sharing all we can to try and try and find speed each and every weekend. And Bristol was good for us in the spring. Um, you know, we had really good speed here, and I was happy with that. And um, they they won up themselves. They they came here with an even better piece, and you know we stayed out of the the accidents. Uh, you know, we played it played it smart today. You know, ran against the fence but with a buffer just to make sure we didn't get up in the marbles, didn't cut a tire down, didn't uh, push sheet metal in on the on a tire. I mean anything that that could go wrong we avoided other than uh, me sliding a little bit a little bit close to the inside wall on a pit stop. So for uh, for the most part a, a mistake free day that led to a, a really good run um, but we had the speed to to be able to pull it off uh, with it. I mean we were able to move forward every every restart and, and that was that's a lot of fun. Okay, next question from Mike and then to Bob. Mike Henry, USA Today. You've often expressed your dislike for points racing. These next few races, you, you, uh, you need good finishes, but I guess what you need most of all is not to have bad finishes. Can you work that balance of not being too aggressive and, and wrecking early and, and still trying to get the points finished you need to, to keep your spot? Yeah, I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, we're always coming to the racetrack to to try and win um, and, and not make mistakes and get the best finish possible. So you can still be aggressive, um, try and get all you can can. Uh, if you mess up a little bit and you lose a couple spots, so be it. If uh, if you wreck a race car, it ruins your day, and ultimately it, it'll ruin your your point situation. So um, you know, just because of of points being where they're at doesn't mean we have to go and just focus on that aspect. We came to Bristol knowing that we had speed, that we loved this racetrack, and it was a good chance for us to, to go out and have an awesome run. And, and that's exactly what we were able to do. Um, points will fall however they will. Uh, you know, you can't focus on them too much because you, um, you lose sight of what, what the main goal is, and, and that's to go out and win races. And, uh, you know, trying to, to get to that point, and, you know, we were competitive here at Bristol. We weren't quite a winning car, but we were every bit of a top five car, and it should have been a little bit. A little bit better there at the end. Um, could have been a little bit better there at the end. Um, just we got to be aware of it, but we're still going to be aggressive with, with our with our racing style. We're not we're not here just to lay over and, and be conservative. We're we're going out for good finishes to to stretch that points to be comfortable at Richmond. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, ESPN. Kind of along those lines, uh, you guys should have more horsepower than the than the BK racing cars and that come into play most at Michigan and Darlington. So how, how nice is it to have, even have a little bit of a buffer and to kind of maybe gain points on a day where 
you know, you've, you've seen the BK racing cars um, have some good days. Uh, we look at the next couple of racetracks, and uh, obviously Roush Gates horsepower is always awesome. Uh, they're always extremely reliable, and we're able to, to get to the finish every time. So, uh, you know, where we look at uh, looking ahead, uh, you know, horsepower is always going to be uh, a big part of it. But we've uh, we've won a lot of races going to the track intentionally, 40 horsepower down, to to be able to hook up for forward bite. So, uh, at the same time, we um, like you said, Michigan's a big one, uh, extremely large aero track as well, uh, and that's really important. So. We uh, we had good speed there earlier this this year. Uh, I'm excited to get back there. Considered a, a home track for Ford, so always a, a little bit added pressure there just from that that side of things. But we're also going there to to stretch the points lead. Uh, you know that's that's a place where we can we can definitely gain a little bit um, and at least at least keep even. So uh, I'm excited for that one. Uh, Darlington is my favorite track that that we go to. I absolutely love that place. So. Uh, Bristol is in my top three, so hopefully it uh, it all works out and that um, that translates to another good run there. Any final questions for Chris? Okay, we'll go to Stan. Chris Stan Creekmore. <clears throat> How much has Ford Performance picked up its involvement with your team over the past month to to two months to help you get to where you are now? Uh, the great thing is Ford Performance has been committed from the start. Uh, you know, th they've gone through a lot of changes in, in the last little bit, and, and they've been all in. Um, you know, they, they made it very clear at the beginning of the season, talking with, with everybody over there, that we're out here to, to win a championship and, and to get wins and, you know, run up front. And, and that's the goal for every Ford out there on the racetrack. So, uh, you know, we come to these next handful of races, and obviously we have a really good shot at, at uh, you know, making the chase now. So. You know, we're we're working hard to, to utilize every resource available now and, and make sure that, that we take advantage of it to make sure that we, we make the chase because that's uh, ultimately that's, um, you know, a step in, in the direction of a championship. Uh, you know, we're, like Ricky was saying, uh, from uh, from Ford camp side, we, we know we got a little bit of work to do yet. And, uh, you know, we all know who's, who's been dominant a lot of these tracks this year and we're working to, uh, to get ahead of, of that group. So, you know, as we look at these... Um, the rest of the year, uh, I mean, it's not just to the chase. We got to work all the way through Homestead to to keep improving, to make sure that that we're in a good spot to try and win championships, win more races, and you know definitely be be ready for next year to to give it everything we got to be uh, more competitive from the very start of the season. Okay, we'll take our final question from Deb. Deb Williams, RacingToday.com. Chris, you've talked about Darlington, Michigan. Your feelings about Bristol. But what about Richmond? Because that's the final race before the chase starts. I left that one out on purpose. <laughs> I've, um, I guess Richmond's got to grow on me a little bit still. Uh, for whatever reason, that one's been tough on me. Um, always, <laughs> it's just always been a tough racetrack. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited that we have figured out some stuff in the past, uh, you know, nine, nine, ten weeks that has translated over to a lot of different racetracks. And I think it's definitely something that'll translate over to Richmond as well. So that um, gives me a, a good confidence boost that we'll be able to go there with something better than we had the, the first race. Uh, you know, it, it's a different kind of racetrack. Uh, you know, I know a couple of the drivers have kind of um, kind of hinted that this uh, this VHT and, and this, this style of adding grip to a racetrack, um, you know, might be something we could look at for other racetracks. Uh, but from my standpoint, the the Richmond race, we were all the way at the top, all the way at the bottom. I, I, it's a fun racetrack. Uh, I just gotta gotta run better there. So we look at these uh, the two coming up. We'll make sure that we can stretch out all we can get to uh, to give us a little buffer at Richmond. Uh, but I, I expect to be competitive at Richmond this time around. What what we've learned over the past several months uh, has picked up huge at every racetrack we've been able to go to, and uh, I don't I don't expect Richmond to be any different. Thank you. Chris, congratulations. Thanks again for coming in. Appreciate it. You know, have a good night.
attention, please. We are now joined by our winner of the Bass Pro Shops NRA Night Race here at Bristol Motor Speedway, Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four Bush Beer Chevrolet for Stuart Haas Racing. This is Kevin's second win of the season and first win for Stuart Haas at Bristol. And also of note for Chevrolet, it is the first Chevy victory at the Bristol Night Race since 2004 and the first Chevrolet week sweep of the Bristol Night Races since 1999. So Kevin, congratulations. Just talk a little bit about your race tonight. Yeah, just, um, you know, really from the drop of the green flag, the car was, was really fast. Um, you know, our, our strong point was, uh, the, you know, the top groove in, in three and four. Our weak point was was being a little bit too free on restarts, but I think as as the runs would go, our car would just keep turning, and I think that's that was really our advantage. So. You know, for for me, I was excited that you were able to to use the bottom of the racetrack, and and you know the lap cars had an option. You didn't just get pinned up high. Um, really, just want to applaud the racetrack for the effort that they made this weekend to to really get that bottom groove working, so that we had multiple grooves of racing. And I think, uh, you know, today as a driver, you had a lot of options, uh, you know, to make your make your car work and maneuver through traffic and, and make up positions. And you know, we started 24th and and pretty much drove through through the field, um, you know, because of that. So, um, and I think, you know, Friday night was probably one of the best Xfinity races I've ever sat and watched. So uh, just really, really happy to see Bristol back um, where it is uh, this weekend. And, um, you know, looking looking forward to, to coming back. And, and obviously coming to Victory Lane is, is is uh, is always exciting. Uh, it's been a decade since we've, since I've been to Victory Lane here, and I know this is the race that he had circled on the calendar every year. And I was like, really, you're going to circle that one? Um, but you know, it's uh, it's definitely added some excitement for me over the last three years to to come back to Bristol, knowing how much it, it meant to him, uh, and that's what motivated me. So they give me great cars to drive, and uh, tonight was was no different. Okay, we're also joined by crew chief Rodney Childers. Rodney, congratulations to you, and if you could just share some thoughts on the win um, from your perspective. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was um, it's definitely a big win for me personally. Um, it's, like he said, it, it's just one that has always meant a lot to me. I uh, loved coming up here when I was younger, uh, you know, a place that I actually raced at and, and just feel like I understand it better. And, and um, I kind of feel like I know what he's going through sometimes and, and that type of thing. But uh, definitely means a lot to me. Uh, you know, a great job from his standpoint. And like he said, you know, applaud the, the racetrack for what they've done this week. Um, it's really awesome to see that bottom groove back and, and to be able to pass those lap cars on the bottom and, and that type of thing. But um, just a great job from our team all around. You know, he, he, he mentioned that we've kind of circled this one every time. And uh, we've had a good car every single time we've been here and, and just, uh, you know, just hasn't worked out to, to our way, I guess you could say, at the end of it. And uh, tonight, tonight uh, everything just happened to come together and, and everybody did a great job. Okay, we'll now open it up for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start back here with Matt and then come up to Bob. Uh, two questions. First one's for Kevin. You talked about the changes to the track, the VHT, the resin. Um, we'd heard Jimmy talk earlier this weekend about how he believes that could open up several opportunities or avenues at other tracks. Do you agree? No. Um, just for the fact that we got to find something else that will work on asphalt. You know, I think we're on to something. Um, but listening to, you know, to them talk about uh, the application that they did this week, um, it really works well on concrete. So I think, you know, Bristol, Martinsville, Dover, you know, there are, there are things that, that we can do to those particular racetracks, Martinsville being a number one on the list. Um, but I think we can get creative, and, and I think everybody saw what happened this weekend. And I think there's obviously got to be some, some other uh, solutions and, and, you know, ideas that we can use on asphalt-type racetracks. I think the concrete racetracks definitely have, have a new option. And I think, um, you know, everybody was kind of terrified of putting the, the rosin back down on the bottom of the racetrack to, to start the race. And, you know, we really didn't have any, any issues. And I think it would have been even better if we could have put the rosin and the VHT in the layers and, and done it, you know, uh, appropriately. Because I, I really feel like the modifieds pulled a lot of the rubber up, you know, to start with. And, and I felt like the truck race was, was a little bit different than, than um, you know, the, the next two races. But all in all, I mean, it, you know, taking a chance like that, it could have been a complete disaster. Uh, but everybody was was um, was all in on, on trying to make the racing better. And, you know, the SMI group has, has a little bit of an advantage on everybody else 
when it comes to these types of situations with their drag race side of things and the VHT and the rosin and how to apply those things and how to rubber it in uh, with all their launch their concrete launch pads. So they had a you know a pretty good insight on on what they needed to do to the bottom after we uh, the driver council and, and NASCAR got together and told them what we were, what we thought we needed to do to to try to make better racing at Bristol. So they were all in, um, and you know, this is just a classic example of, of a collaboration between SMI, NASCAR, and, and the Driver Council, and, and seeing the, the, you know, the outcome of it is, is pretty exciting just because of the fact it does open up options, and, and what do we need to do for the asphalt racetracks to open up those options to, to get, you know, whether it's just strips of, of grip, um, you know, through the, through the center of the corner or wherever it may be, does, it probably doesn't need to be this wide in, in a lot of places. But you know, I think it definitely has opened everybody's eyes to saying, "All right, that worked. That worked pretty darn good." Because the last few years we've been here, you get on the bottom of the racetrack and you were you were three or four tenths slower. And, and tonight you could hold your ground, you could get past lap cars. It gave everybody an option to, to do something different. And, and um, you know, as a driver, that that's what you want. You want options. You don't want to you don't want you don't want to get stuck by, behind a car that's four or five tenths slower than you after you just ran them down from a half a lap and, and can't pass them. So um, it was exciting. Secondly, uh, Matt Weaver, Racer Auto Week, forgot about that. Um, there is for both of you guys, we, we've talked all year about Toyota being the dominant team, the things that they're doing to be so much better than everyone else. But you guys have kind of been the Chevrolet team that's been right there with them. Uh, for both of y'all, do y'all have kind of a chip on your shoulder that says, hey, we're right there with them, we're just as good, and when we get back to downforce track intermediates, we can go head to head with them? It's really not a competition you know, between us and Toyota. Really, for us, it's about um, not beating ourselves, um, and you know today we didn't we didn't beat ourselves, and, and that's what we've been talking about. And the performance of our race cars will be there. Um, you know we've done a good job in, in getting pit road where it needed to be. Um, you know whether it's been me or you know whatever the situation has been, we've we've had some some circumstances that hadn't worked out. We've had a lot of bad luck. We've had some things that we've done wrong, but you know the performance hasn't hasn't really been an issue. Yeah, there's been a couple of racetracks where they beat us, but I don't think I could count. I don't think I could count more than three three races that I thought that that we wouldn't have been in contention to to win. So um, we're gonna block all that out. You know, it's it's us against us, and you know that that's how we're gonna treat it. And if that's not good enough, then we'll go back to the drawing board next year. I think we have a great plan. Uh, I think we have great cars, and and we've made a lot of adjustments, and and we've had a lot to adjust to. Um, you know, as as we started the year and overcome and. Um, there's just a, there's just a lot going on, and, and I think um, hopefully this this win and, and everything getting ready to start with the chase is is going to put it all the pieces together, and I think everybody's been working hard to do that. Uh, I mean, he covered most of it. Um, you know, th those guys do a good job, of course. They they've got good drivers, they got good cars, and they work together well. And uh, but like he said, it's 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 still about not beating ourselves. Um, you know, we've had. We've had great cars. We've been right there with them, and um, you know, hopefully, uh, over the next you know few weeks, uh, we can get things ready for the chase and, and be ready when it counts. Okay, we'll take our next question from Bob, then to Mike, and then up to the press box. I'm Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, Kevin. Hi, Bob. Hey. Uh, glad to see you here. What? I'm glad to see you here. Glad to see you. Um, I'm just glad you're not in Brazil. <laughs> um, I hear the lasagna is not as good. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, Everybody talks about how exciting it is to win the night race. I'm curious if you feel like you've won the night race. I have. I I don't even care. <laughs> I just want a trophy. I don't care where it came from. You know what the situation is. I know he <laughs> likes the likes the night race, but you know to to see um, for for me to walk into the racetrack last night and see the crowd that that you hadn't seen in a, in in a, you know a few years and and see the excitement back inside of the racetrack. It, it definitely felt like the night race used to, and, and um, you know, to come to Bristol is just different anyway when you come to the night race, but um, I'm just glad we won. And considering that you guys didn't do a uh, qualifying mock round and had the qualifying result that you did, did you think, oh man, this could be another one of those weekends where we have a good piece, but it's just not going to happen? Um, I. You know, qualifying in the back kind of motivates me. I know it frustrates him, but it's kind of exciting. I like to pass cars. He doesn't really like to do it that way, but I think it's fun to pass cars. And, and the last time I won at Bristol, we started 43rd, so it worked out fine. Okay, Mike? Uh, Mike Embry, USA Today. 
from from what you had seen this week, did you have a reasonably good idea how the track was going to react and, and know what you were going to be able to do, or did it take a while into the race for you to figure all that out? Yeah, I think that the biggest question was just you know how much would the bottom groove wear all the rosin off and and you know what would that really do? But there was still plenty of grip down there. You know, it was right next to the to the apron uh, of the racetrack. It still had a you know you know probably a four or six inch strip uh, of stuff that that stayed on the racetrack. Everything else kind of wore off. The part that that kind of caught me off guard was how rough it was. I don't know if that was from the rosin um, and the application or if it was from the grinding, but it seemed to get better as as the race went on on the bottom of the racetrack with that that roughness. I think it was probably from the rosin on the racetrack. And you mentioned Martinsville. How do you imagine racing there would change with, with some sort of substance on in the turns? The best racing that, that I've ever been involved in with at Martinsville, they took the tractor in the backhoe and they dug these big giant trenches in the racetrack and you couldn't run on the bottom, but you could still kind of dive down there and kind of do the slide job. And I thought that was that was great. But um, Martinsville needs to needs to call Bristol and say, what, what do we need to do to, to make a second lane come in? Because they did a great job here, and I, I think that would be be the first place that I would I would attack and, and do something different. Okay, we'll now take questions from the press box. From Azuresport.com, you've been so consistent all season, but how does this win kind of you know bolster the team and, and get you in position to have momentum going into the chase, Kevin? It's all about confidence and it's all about momentum. You know, I think we've been confident in our cars, just not confident in 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 closing everything out. You know, from for myself to just is it ever going to really happen again? Um, and I think that goes away tonight, and, and you get back into that. Um, you know, we know we have fast cars, knowing that you can win again, and kind of happened for that. Kind of happened that way for us in 2014 at Charlotte uh, when when we won, and, and it just kind of. You know, reinstilled that confidence of everything that we know we can do, um, and it finally all just came together tonight. So, we're three weeks from the from the end of the regular season, and I don't think it could have come together at a, at a better time. Uh, I'm looking forward to you know to, to going to the next next few weeks and, and really getting getting started in Chicago with our with our test. I think it's Tuesday. Today's Sunday, so we, yeah, Tuesday. So a um, lot to be learned there and. Um, you know, confidence, confidence, and and um, momentum go a long ways in in racing, baseball, football, basketball, whatever it is. And you just want to ride the wave. And, and for Rodney, you've been a big advocate and a champion for your pit crew. But do you feel that they're where they need to be right now to go in and win a championship? Um, you know, since we changed things around, they have done a tremendous job. They've done really, really, really good. Um, we've been able to compete with the Gibbs cars, and that's what you compare yourself to every time you come down pit road. And, and like Kevin said earlier, it's, it's about not beating yourself. And, um, you know, as the night was going on and, and, and we became the dominant car and started to lead the race, that's when everybody's nerves, you know, get up. And uh, we started having mistakes. And... Um, yeah, I walked to the bathroom during that that one caution after that, and um, you know just thought about what's the right thing to do, and uh, got them all together behind the the pit box, which I don't normally do. Sometimes people take that the wrong way, and it makes things worse. But um, they all looked me in the eye, and, and I could tell as soon as I turned around that that they were ready to do this, and and we were going to win a race tonight. And and I got back on the the pit box and told my engineer Dax that they're they're going to be good to go from now on. And next time we come down pit road, it was great. So it's all about having that confidence. Uh, this win will mean a lot to those guys and, and um, believing in themselves and, and not getting nervous when the time comes. And, and that's, that's really what's important. Any additional questions in the press box? <coughs> OK, we'll go to Jerry and then come up to Kenny. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires and former Racing Network. Uh, Kevin. Uh, Obviously, Tony had a kind of a rough night, uh, but then he rallied and got a couple spots back, and you brought him out there, I guess, at the end. Can you talk about that and the, the moment for you being his last season and stuff? Yeah, that really wasn't what I had planned, but I learned that Tony and I aren't very good at sign language between each other from one one seat to the other, and it evolved into, into the burnouts, which was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, that was, that, was, that was pretty neat to be able to win a race and, and – convince him to actually come out on the front straight away and, and do do a burnout um, 
and he actually did it and was, was pretty neat. So hopefully uh, that was pretty cool for the fans and, and to see him happy and smiling and, and having fun and, and doing the burnout was, was pretty cool. So um, I've, been wanting to, I've been wanting to do something like that with, with Tony. We just hadn't, hadn't won a race yet and, uh, to do it. So um, when they were stopping to check all the lug nuts on the back straightaway, I was not leaving the side of that 14 car. He was not going to get out of doing something. Uh, after after we won, um, he was gonna he was gonna participate some way, shape, or form, even if I had to pull him out of the car. Okay, we'll go to Stan. Stan Craigmore, um, Rodney, Kevin earlier said something about you <coughs> circling this track every single year is you know the place you want to win. What is it about this track that makes you want to win here? Um. I think the biggest thing is just being so close so many times. You know, we, we finished second here with Riggs in 06 and come close to winning it. Um, we finished second with Rudiman, I think, two or three times and um, was close to winning it. And then, you know, with Kevin here, we've we've been, you know, you know really fast every time we've been here and just had things happen that, that didn't go our way. But um, I think the biggest thing is it's just short track racing. That's what I grew up doing. That's what, um, that's what I love. Um, you know, just racing here before, just just a little bit of everything. I, I think it just has always meant a lot to me. And, um, you know, it, it's any type of short track race. It doesn't matter if it's here or Martinsville. You know, I, my car chief said that going to Victory Lane. He's like, we got one more left. That's Martinsville. And I was like, no, we got a lot more left. But uh, Martinsville would be cool for sure. Any final questions? Okay, gentlemen, congratulations. Good luck in Michigan. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, it was back in May. It evolved a lot from there.